Welcome back. After completing the Shruti, Smruti, Puranam and Itihasam, the fifth category is Agamas. Agamas is from Dravidians. It was first written in Tamil and then was translated to Sanskrit later. It is a collection of literatures related to cosmology, epistemology, philosophical doctrines, yogas and all about temple construction. But most of it is about epistemology. Epistemology is nothing but the study of knowledge itself. Studying knowledge from two perspectives. One is faith and the other is logic. What is faith and what is logic? How to define our experiences based on our faith and how to define it based on our logic? Faith and logic are the two opposite sides of Agamas. Experience of knowledge is totally opposite when we see it from these two perspectives. The most beautiful one-line definition of Agamas is about father and mother. When you are born, Mother is your truth. It can be proved through logic. But father is faith and it is believed through whom the mother shows and tells you that he is your father. So the knowledge of what we think about life is from two perspectives. One is learning something through logical reasoning and another is through faith and through what we believe based on our experiences in life. Even today, we see many research scholars all over the world travel to Varanasi and the banks of Ganga to understand this field of learning system, Agamas. It is one of the most complicated learning methodology and our reasoning power and decision making skills depends on the skill of Agamas. The field of Agamas and acquiring decision making skills to run a global company was the main reason why great entrepreneurs like Mark Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs visited India and studied Agamas before they expanded their business. The learning they had through Agamas played a key role in making their company succeed and outgrow in the world. Carvings and scriptures were first introduced to mankind through Shilpa Shastra, which is a part of Agamas. There are 77 Shakti Agamas, 28 Shiva Agamas, and 108 Vishnu Agamas. Then comes the last category of our learning system which we call as Siddhantam. Siddhantam means science. From the point of Agamas, if you want to define, then Smriti is all about belief and faith. Everything in Smriti is based on belief and faith. Smriti needs you to believe that whatever it is said in Smriti is said by a great Maharshi. You have to just believe it and you should never question it. And we should never use logic to understand Smriti. However, Siddhantam is all about logic. Here whatever we say or learn need to be proved through logic and proof. Siddhantam are all about the principles and theories that define and run life on this planet. Smriti is all about faith while Siddhantam is all about logic and it is based on science. It is a very very vast subject and some of the most popular Siddhantam we have here are in surgery and medicine we have Sushruta Samhita which was published in 1000 BC that is almost 3100 years ago by a saint called Sushruta about medicine and treatment. This Siddhantam was so powerful that it led to the birth of world's first medical system which we call as Ayurveda. Ayurveda is the world's oldest medical system which is relevant even today. The world's first pharmacist was Charaka. He was an expert in drugs and medicine. He identified the natural plants and herbs that contained carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins and he was able to create drugs based on the human requirement and he was the first to start a pharmacy. The science of pharmacy is documented in Charaka Samhita in the year 200 BC. Well, how effective was Sushruta treatment and Charaka medicines. It can be known by one single fact which is that the life expectancy of humans in India at this time was a whopping 102 years. 
Alberonian Huan Sang in their books have mentioned that during the period of 600 to 1000 AD, Indian life expectancy was in the range of 92 to 110 years. However, after 1080 AD, due to invasions, wars, and exploitation of our civilization, our life expectancy dropped drastically to just 26 years in the 1800s and was the lowest at 22 years in 1920s. However, situation gradually improved after independence and today life expectancy in India has reached almost 70 years. When we take reference of Huan Sang and Alberoni books, it is mentioned that during that time, many patients all over the world who had incurable diseases used to take horses and travel all the way to Kumbha Mela in India as the medicines they got here would cure any disease in the world. The Siddhantam of Charaka and Sushruta were so powerful that from that time to even today, it has become a practice to believe that if you have an incurable disease, if you take them to Kumbha Mela, then they will get cured. This belief exists even today, not just in India, but all over the globe. Another famous Siddhantam, which you might know is Aryabhatiyam Siddhantam. While talking about Aryabhatiyam Siddhantam, we need to refer to another great learning methodology and knowledge revolution that happened between 800 and 1400 AD. This center of knowledge revolution was Baghdad and this revolution is termed as Islamic Golden Age. When it comes to Islam, Macaulay history focuses on invaders like Muhammad Ghori, Muhammad Ghazni and Mughals. But what is more important in the history of Islam is the period of 800 to 1400 AD. After Muhammad the Prophet, the third caliphate to succeed him was Harun al-Rashid called as Abbasur. The great historian Al-Biruni and Abbasur were contemporaries. Hearing about Indian education system and Aryabhatiyam system through Al-Biruni, Abbasud was very much impressed. He was so impressed that he wanted to establish the world's best knowledge system that is in par with the Indian knowledge system of that time. So he started the House of Wisdom in Baghdad and after the Indian knowledge system the biggest discoveries happened in this house of wisdom between the period of 1000 to 1480. The driving force behind this house of wisdom and the Islamic golden age was the Aryabhatiyam Siddhanta, arithmetic progression, sign, value of pi, calculus, all were discovered in India and the research on this subject was carried out during the Islamic golden age and that led to the modern mathematics, trigonometry, algebra and calculus. Shilpa Shastra, which was originally designed by Dravidians in the Agamas, also found place in Baghdad. Abbas through al literature understood for the first time how Dravidians built temples and gopurams, especially the Garbhagruhas, without any pillar support. The design of Garbhagruha of temples proposed in the Shilpa Shastra of Dravidians, which we see even today in Madurai and other South Indian temples, led to the birth of dome structure in Islam. The architectural marvels, which is used in Taj Mahal, Gol Gumbas, all were born in Baghdad, inspired by the Indian Shilpa Shastra of Dravidians. So according to al documentation, Aryabhatiya Siddhantam, Shilpa Shastra were the main inspirations behind the starting of House of Wisdom and the Islamic Golden Age. What many people don't know is that the first Mughal ruler Babur was actually a Mongolian and his ancestors were the very reason behind the destruction of House of Wisdom. 
द इस्लामिक गोल्डन एज एंडेड बाय 1400 एडी विद द इन्वेशन ऑफ मंगोलियंस एंड दीस मंगोलियंस लेटर बिकेम मोगल्स हु देन रूल्ड इंडिया फॉर ऑलमोस्ट 500 इयर्स द रिसर्च एंड डिस्कवरीज दैट हैपेंड एट बागदाद केम टू एन एंड विद मंगोलियन इन्वेशन many great scholars of abbasid and prophet period were butchered by mongolian rulers who then became the moguls for their safety many of the scholars dispersed all over the world and it is said that some of them reached kerala of india many say vasco da gama found sea route to india in 1499 the trading of spices between cochin and middle east were happening long before from 1100 ad influenced and taking this route many of the scholars from the islamic golden age reached kerala influenced by this islamic scholars when they reached kerala another great scientist called madhava from thrissur district of kerala reworked on the concepts of calculus and the modern day calculus was developed through the siddhantam of mahajya nayana prakara This Siddhantam was the first to introduce to the world the concept of differentiation and integration formulas. It was published and put forth by a mathematician and astronomer called Madhava in the Thrissur district of Kerala. It is said that this was influenced by the work of Islamic scholars of Baghdad. So remember the birth place of calculus is Thrissur of Kerala. and it happened in 1340 to 1425 ad it is said that in kerala vaidika brahmins and the muslim scholars who migrated from the house of wisdom worked very closely and established a very strong bond between islam and hindu school of philosophies so we have just explored sushruta charaka aryabhatiyam and madhava philosophy we still have thousands of philosophies in siddhantam and if we keep on talking on it we can go on on and on but i will dedicate one more session on this siddhantam in our next session to conclude about the indian knowledge system so let us meet again in our next section continuing our discussion about siddhantam branch of indian knowledge system thank you